GitHub Discussions is a new way for software communities to collaborate outside of the codebase. It was announced a while back, but now is finally available for everyone. In this video, we will see how we can enable Discussions and what we can do with it. This is a 3 Minutes Friday. Hi everybody, welcome back to Coded Dave and welcome to a new episode of the 3 Minutes series. In each episode, I will try and explain a concept, showcase a product or service, or yet try and teach you something and only in just 3 minutes. Short videos, big value, hopefully. Before we start, make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and if you want to learn more about DevOps, especially with Azure DevOps and GitHub. Just click on the subscribe button below right now and turn on the notifications so you will not miss any new videos. Today we're going to talk about GitHub discussions because even though they've been announced a month ago, I believe around satellite 2020 timeframe, now they are finally available for all and only public repos. We're going to see what it takes to set up discussion properly and what we can do with this new exciting service. But let's start the clock and get into it. Discussions live in your project repository, so they are accessible where your community is already working together. Their threaded format makes it easy to start, respond to, and organize unstructured conversations, and questions can be marked as answered, so over time a community's knowledge base grows naturally. And because discussions aren't close to the way issues are, they can easily serve as a place for maintaining facts and other collaborative documentation. Let's see how to enable discussions on our repos. As you can see, I don't have it yet. So let's see how we can enable it. First of all, we need to go to settings and in the option tab, just scroll down and you'll see that the last one is actually discussions. Now to just enable it, you can click on the checkbox and that's already enabled, but we can go a step further. And in fact, if we click on this setup discussions button, GitHub gives us a template for one of the discussions that we can create. Let's start discussion. And as you can see now, we have the discussions enabled and we have a first discussion with the template that GitHub proposed. Now that we finally have discussions enabled on our repository, let's take a look at what we can do with them. When you click on discussions, you're brought to the discussion homepage. On the left, we have the predefined categories that you can use to filter your discussions. And that of course, can be customized and personalized. For example, I don't want to have the show and tell category on this repo, so I will just delete it. You can decide to reassign discussions that have been associated with that category to other categories. Let's go back to the discussions. And if we open the discussion we created previously, we can see that, of course, we can change its category just using the settings under the category tab. We can also see that we can lock this conversation, we can transfer the discussion, we can pin the discussion on top of the homepage, and we can delete it. Let's try, for example, to pin this. When you do so, you can decide a background you want and a pattern. Like, for example, let's say I want the orange and I want to have this pattern, and now I can pin it. The result will be, I'll have it up here. If we now create another discussion, and we pin this as well, we can see that the layout is changed with the two discussions pinned. And one thing that is pretty cool is that they have the icon related to the category they are from. You can rearrange them just clicking on these button and move them. You can, of course, as we said before, filter your discussions by category. And you can also order them by status, like new, top, answered, unanswered, and so on and so forth. Some category can be marked as Q&A and some other cannot. The general and ideas here are just general discussions. They are not some sort of Q&A kind of thread. But for example, if I open a new discussion in the Q&A category, and now I go back to the discussions and I click on unanswered, you can see that this is marked as unanswered. If I'm going and comment on my discussion in general, you can see this is just a normal comment. But if I'm going back and I'm going to add a comment, or in this case, an answer to the question, you can see that I have now this button over here, which is used to mark these as an answer. So if I click this, you see this box become green. And in fact, now if I go back to discussions and I check for unanswered, nothing comes up. But if I check for answered, then is where this comes up. 
And we can also see here on the left that we have this most helpful box that basically gives you some information on the users that have answered the majority of the questions in the last 30 days. Finally, how can we mark a category as a Q&A? Well, that's easy. You just go on the category, you edit it. And apart from changing the name here, we can mark that as a question and answer type of discussion. And that will enable the mark as answer and all the other features we've seen. And we're done. Remember that this service is still in public beta and only on public repos. So I think there is a margin for it to be better in the future. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about discussions and if you've had already a chance to use them in any project. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Coder Dave.